Um, so for those who weren't in the room, uh, my name is John Siskovich. I grew up in Connecticut, uh, I'm now starting a farm in Connecticut, went to school at UConn uh, for theater and entertainment, <clears throat> worked in television production uh, for a number of years in New York City, uh, had a blast doing that, uh, got into slow food, rode my bike across the country with my wife, 5,500 miles, uh, seven mountain ranges, a couple dozen farms. Uh, we were visiting farms and craft breweries along the way, interviewing farmers. Uh, this last year, we worked as apprentices on a 200-member vegetable CSA and um, grass-fed beef farm. Um, Kate got pregnant last fall. We're having a baby uh, girl in July and um, starting a farm in New Milford, Connecticut, where I raised pastured poultry. <clears throat> I found that as I was working on the farm last year, one of the best ways, because I was always busy with my hands or driving for a CSA drop-off point uh, to get information, is to listen to podcasts. Um, and a podcast will run into exactly what that is uh, right now, but I found it a really good way as farmers um, to digest that information because it's tough to sit down in front of a computer and read. Um, you want to feel like you're multi multitasking and weeding or planting or seeding uh, allows you to let your ears uh, do some of the work. <clears throat> so podcasting 101. Oh, in addition, I, I started farmmarketingsolutions.com uh, in addition to my farm where I help other farmers um, with their, you know, it's the business of farming. Uh, I help them with farm marketing, editing photos, uh, doing digital stuff, and making it very approachable for people who are either starting farms or growing their current agricultural business. Uh, and I have that weekly every Tuesday, uh, comes out every morning, uh, every Tuesday morning, and I've been going since January. It's been the most fun that I've had doing anything. <clears throat> so what is a podcast? Uh, it's like regular radio. It's regular radio online, but it's not a live stream. It's on demand, so you can listen to it whenever you want. Uh, so it's web-based audio, it's syndicated, and it's usually based around a particular topic. And syndication just means that when I create the program, <clears throat> my podcast, I edit it, um, record it, and put it on my computer, upload it to a server online, which is a big computer um, storage, and put it up on my blog. That automatically sends it out to iTunes, Blackberry, Stitcher, uh, and different programs that you can download it on your phone, download it on your computer, listen to it on my website whenever you want. Uh, it's my show, um, 45 minutes to an hour long, uh, on demand for whenever you get the chance to listen to it. And I've had people write in, you know, they download it to their phone and listen to it um, as they're doing, go, driving to the um, grain elevator, um, true story. <clears throat> and people who've downloaded it and listened as they're starting seeds in their greenhouse this year, uh, it's been phenomenal. I, I used it in the field. Uh, from my phone, I would just play it out loud and weed last year. <clears throat> uh, the benefits uh, is exactly what I was talking about, reaching your audience through another medium. I just had a talk on using photographs, and that's visual. Um, you can use video. I was just talking to Troy about using video to con connect with people uh, and using audio. Podcasting is audio, and it's another way to reach your audience to gain members, to get a information, you know, NPR, newspapers, everybody's got some kind of um, podcasting presence nowadays and it's growing. Uh, a study performed by eMarketer projects that by the end of this year, there will be 37.6 million people who download podcasts monthly. Uh, that's more than double the 2008 figure. <clears throat> uh, and that's been really awesome for me. I've only been doing it for three months uh, and I'm averaging 1,100 downloads per week. Uh, it spikes a little higher than that, never really goes lower than that, but I've built it. It's been just me. Uh, I do all my own editing. I schedule the interviews. I interview the people through my computer and my setup, which we're about to see. Um, I've done all the marketing, uh, a lot of grassroots, guerrilla marketing, um, but I'm reaching a lot of people and it's just growing phenomenally. I have over, I think, 14,000 downloads, more than that right now. Well, let me ask you a quick question. Uh, yeah. You're doing all this work, man. Yeah, it's going really great. You get the hits and everything else. Yep. Um, how's that translating into an economic? That that goes for you. Yep. Uh, exactly. Right. right now, the podcast isn't making me money directly. Um, the traditional sales funnel of put the information in front of the customer, buy Coca Cola, they buy Coca Cola, done, uh, is 
on its way out, I found from all the marketing research and the people that I've talked to, <clears throat> that the sales funnel gets a little bit longer. And as a farmer, you really want to tell your story and that builds value into you, uh, into your, what you're doing. <clears throat> For farm marketing solutions, I'm not selling CSA shares. I'm selling the information on my farm marketing solution website. So this is a good way for me to get people drive traffic to my website, which I have things for sale up there. I have affiliate links uh, where if you buy something, I earn a commission on a sales commission. This is me doing sales through helpful information. Uh, this is me driving traffic to my website. <clears throat> it's not going to be good for everybody. Um, the purpose of this talk is to give you the, the basics of what is involved and how you can do it on the cheap and what a more professional setup uh, would look like. But it's, it's a longer sales funnel and it's taking, converting from um, a listener of the podcast into buying a product. Um, but it's bringing them a, a little bit longer down that path. Um, that's one of the ways to get uh, money for podcasting is sponsoring, and I have uh, something to say on that, is <clears throat> don't approach sponsors for your website, for your farm, for your podcast right away. Um, anybody with money wants to see the numbers. Uh, the proof is in the punch. If you have the numbers of downloads and you can say, um, you know, this is, this is how many people are downloading and engaging, and I have this many followers. Um, it's easier to get that sponsorship money if you're just starting out. Don't waste your time because they're not going to give you the time of day. Also, the people with money like Tractor Supply, Carhartt, Home Depot who would <clears throat> sponsor something like this, uh, it's a lot of older uh, guys marketing and it's a newer technology in the grand scheme. Uh, so they don't really get that longer sales funnel yet. They're still in the days of buy Coca-Cola, here's a can of Coke. And I'll explain all these. Welcome to the Growing Farms podcast, where farmers come together to talk shop. Whether you've been farming for years, you're a homegrown greenhorn, or you're starting to consider a career in agriculture, there is something we can all do to grow our farms. The Growing Farms Podcast is your weekly behind-the-scenes look at family farms from across the United States. On the show, I share my experience and my expertise in farm marketing, small farm business, and farming as a career, all while starting and operating a farm myself. I seek advice from farmers and friends from all over the country. I believe that the best way to learn how to farm is from other farmers. That's why the guiding principle of the Growing Farms Podcast is the documenting and sharing of information all for free. Join me every week, and together we will grow our farms. I'm your host, John Soskovich, and you're listening to the Growing Farms Podcast. This is Sylvie Steffi from Farming, and you're listening to the Growing Farms Podcast. This is Josh Volk from Spohan Farm, and you're listening to Growing Farms Podcast. This is Jesse LaFlam with Pete and Jerry's Organic Eggs, and you're listening to the Growing Farms Podcast. Hi, this is Bernie Urtenzi from the Urtenzi Family Farm, and you're listening to the Growing Farm Podcast. This is Eric Taylor of Devon Point Farm, and you're listening to the Growing Farms Podcast. Thank you for listening to the Growing Farms Podcast, brought to you by Farm Marketing Solutions at www.farmmarketingsolutions.com. I'll try to pick a song that would get stuck in your head. Yep. Uh, so when you are podcasting or putting up anything online, <clears throat> uh, don't steal music. Uh, there's people who come after you for pirating videos. Um, the same thing with music as well. Uh, an artist, you know, paid to create, that's their art. It'd be like taking a painting down off the wall in a museum and saying, well, this is mine now because I put farm marketing solutions on it. Um, <clears throat> there's plenty of websites for royalty-free music. Uh, I really liked that song. It was a, a long search for my introduction. Um, there are podcasts out there with no introduction music, so you don't have to do this at all. Um, I find that you get what you pay for in everything, and I wanted to put some real quality into what I was presenting, and I've, I've, we'll get into that in just a second. But <clears throat> I paid for a three-minute song. I think it was 30 bucks. I own it now. 
Uh, they just created a general song. <clears throat> um, you heard my British announcer. Uh, his name's Peter. He lives in the UK. There's a website, Fiverr.com, F-I-V-E-R-R. -R. It's on your handout, where you can pretty much pay people $5 to do anything ever. <laughs> Uh, and yes, the, the giggles, exactly. Uh, whether it's send somebody a happy birthday greeting in a chicken suit or do a professional quality voiceover for your podcast. Uh, and then there's add-ons where you can get a different file for another $5, but Fiverr.com, it cost me $5 to have a professional VO <clears throat> from the UK do my, my read. Uh, it was great. The guy was super nice. Um, I put a lot of production quality into what my voice sounds like, and I'll show you what that looks like. Uh, for my phone interviews, I use Google Voice and I send it through my computer. Uh, I also do it with Skype. Uh, Skype typically gets you a, a higher quality audio. Um, the, the ultimate preference for me is in studio, I have two microphones. Um, I'll show you what my studio looks like. It's not as classy as uh, I may make it sound like right now. <clears throat> um, but I use Google Voice, record everything through a mixer. Uh, it all goes into a, an audio device, and I put it up online. And I'll walk you through all those steps before there's any, any questions. Uh, so the inexpensive podcasting. Uh, how I started with how-to uh, how tutorials on farm marketing solutions was a $30 USB Logitech headset. The audio is not the best thing you've ever had. It's better than the speaker that's just built into your webcam on your computer. Um, you can start uh, doing that if you feel like this is something you want to do. I would pick up the $30 headset and just record a bunch of things on your computer to see if you like the sound of your own voice, if you really have something to say. Get some practice because you will um and ah a lot. Uh, I did seven takes on my first episode because I hated the first six. And the seventh one, I was like, that's it. It's going up. I'm done. Uh, <clears throat> but exactly that is I would um and ah. And as I searched for what to say next, or I got nervous because I was on a microphone and what was going to happen. I just got more, the more comfortable I got with it, the less takes I have. And I do most of my shows now in one take. I, I plan out, I write out what I want to do, and I can do it in one take. Um, there is uh, Blog Talk Radio, uh, which I don't have on the website or the handout, uh, is a free podcasting thing, um, website. So if you want to do your recordings that way, you can record right into Blog Talk Radio and kind of get your foot in the door that way, uh, you know, dip a toe in the water. Uh, or you can do Libsyn, which is L-I-B-S-Y-N.com. That's Liberated Syndication. Uh, they have a $5 a month generic uh, simple podcasting package as well. And they do a lot of things like track your downloads and let people um, download your site and share it with other people. And the, the person ranking at number one for the keyword farm podcast on Google, if you Google farm podcast, is the Coopcast, which is in New York, upstate New York. I forget what farm it is, but it's called the Coopcast. Uh, they put their podcast out on Libsyn. Um, <clears throat> I don't know what they use for recording, but they don't have, they have their website and then they have an account on Libsyn and that's how people are listening to their show. Um, mine, <clears throat> so if you picture this, I should have had a full room shot. <clears throat> I have my mixer. Uh, we'll go into the different elements. I have my whiteboard where I either whiteboard out what it's going to be on the episode or this is how many chickens I'm going to raise this year. Uh, this is my office. If you t turn at my office chair immediately around, there's my couch and a television <laughs> and my bedroom and the kitchen. And right here, I'm starting seeds. Uh, so I'm fitting this all in one bedroom. You don't need a, a, a crazy sound studio with foam on the walls. I'm doing this from my living room. Uh, but the audio, as you heard, and if you listen to the podcast, is really top-notch. And that comes from the equipment that I have that cancels out some of that ambient noise. Uh, like I said, you get what you pay for. And I spent a lot of money, relatively, on this, uh, around $3,000 for all the equipment. <clears throat> I found out what equipment to use uh, and how to get this all started through the two websites that I have on the top of your handout which is from Pat Flynn from smartpassiveincome.com, who has an excellent podcast. That's what I was listening to in the fields on the farm this year. And podcastanswerman.com with Cliff Ravenscraft. He's, they're both super, super guys. Uh, real nice, put a lot of information out for free. Uh, have a A to Z tutorials for how to podcast with videos and more information on it 
uh, all for free on their websites, uh, and I put the links on there on my website as well. <coughs> um, I pay ten dollars a month, six dollars a month for web hosting for my website. In addition, I pay for hosting for my uh, audio files. That way, if my website crashes or what happens 24 hours before I came here, somebody hacked it and I couldn't get into the back end of my website. If you were to visit, everything looked fine in the front, but I couldn't edit the back end. Uh, it's the joys of being a, a huge geek and uh, wanting to have my hands on everything. I had to deal with that in addition to a million other things. <clears throat> I have um, web hosting, which is right now $15 a month. I'm going to bump up to $20 a month, get a little bit more space, and they create an iPhone app for you as part of that. Uh, you still have to charge people for it. I'm balancing that. <clears throat> $15 a month. Um, my files are secure and backed up, redundant. They can't be lost. And when I put them up on my website, they automatically go out to iTunes and Stitcher, people who download them on their phones. <clears throat> Stitcher is an app for your phone. You can get iTunes on your phone uh, to listen to it. And those audio files won't go anywhere if anything crashes on my website. So it's a, another level of security. Uh, three of the things that I use, a line mixer that looks like a lot of knobs, doesn't it? <laughs> Um, each one of these rows does the same exact thing. I can put six microphones on there. All these buttons mean the same thing, so I just had to learn one row. And really what I did was Googled, what the hell do I do with a line mixer? And somebody said, I'll oh, put your knobs here and that's fine. And I've done that and that was, that's it. And my audio sounds great. I don't know what everything does. I wish I had more friends who were in radio, but it sounds awesome. And I know that I've heard the difference between having all this equipment and not having it. Um, and again, I'll go into that in just a minute. <clears throat> uh, one of the other things I have is professional quality microphones or headphones because I want to hear um, the quality at its best. If it's going to be played through you know, a subpar speaker on here or somebody's earbuds, <clears throat> I want to hear if there's any ticks, any crackles, anything I can change in the audio. So I have the muffs that cover my entire ear and I hear just that when they're on. So I have the top quality audio it's coming to the person because if you don't have high fidelity audio high quality audio you can have the best content in the world and people are going to tune out after a while uh, and if for instance of that not to throw anybody under the bus but <clears throat> with the Greenhorns radio which they've been around for a number of years uh, and Severin was just on my show they she calls in and she has a caller in so it's two voices on a telephone line and because you don't have a high quality audio to anchor that, to ha go back to you know, my deep voice talking out over the microphone, and then it goes to the caller and it goes back to me with a really clear audio. It gets really annoying to listen to, and I've, I've listened to it for a while, and then I just stopped listening because the you know, content's good, but it just eh, it, isn't, it gets irritating. Uh, sorry, Severin, wherever you are. Um, the other thing is a digital audio recorder. <clears throat> so there are free or cheap uh, ways to record onto your um, computer. And if you're just doing it yourself and there's not any interviews, uh, I would recommend going that route. Uh, don't spend the money on a, a digital audio recorder. I use this. Uh, I get a number of different uses off of it. It's about the size of my phone or my wallet. Um, it just records audio. It's got a few simple settings on it that um, Cliff Ravencraft on Podcast Answer Man goes over those. <clears throat> it serves in as I have a cable in from my mixer here to this, and it records my audio so that if I have an interview with a farmer from across the country and I've been working on him for a couple weeks to get the interview, and in the middle of it my computer crashes or that audio software crashes because my computer can't handle having Skype and the recording program up at the same time, or if I close it out and I forget to save it or the file gets corrupted, that doesn't happen with this. Uh, this be becomes just a separate audio file um, that I can load into my computer and then edit from there. What, what's the brand? And uh, this is a Roland R05. Roland, Roland R O L A N D. R, R 05. Yeah. Um, these uh, complex. Uh, the top one is just a head, uh, less complex. It's a headphone amplifier. I have two microphones. I'll show the microphones in the next slide. <clears throat> and I have people in the studio as guests, and those microphones uh, only capture the noise coming out the front. They don't capture it on the side, so if you're talking to the side of it, they won't capture the audio. So I have my guests have a headphones so they can see if they're wandering without me having to say, please put the mic in front of your face. <laughs> um, 
I like to listen to the audio really loud so I can pick up on anything. Uh, and that tends to blow other people's ears out. Um, so it was a way for me to control uh, where the sound's going. I also have speakers going out to my uh, apartment. The one on the bottom is a compressor limiter gate. I won't go into this too much because people spend a long time figuring that out. Again, I found the piece of equipment off Podcast Answer Man. I googled what settings do I have for an audio interview for a compressor limiter gate, <clears throat> set those settings, and it's been great. Uh, a quick, for instance, of what this can do, it does a lot. Uh, when you're calling somebody on the telephone, you always hear a little crackle. Uh, when they're not speaking or when they are speaking, uh, there's that general phone fuzz. And if you go back to me and they're not talking, you'll hear that fuzz through the whole interview. And what that does is create a little clip, uh, like clipping point where it cuts out that crackle and it'll only pick up their microphone when they're talking. <coughs> so if you went on an audio from one to 10 and your normal speaking voice is an eight, anything below a four, it won't pick up on the recording makes it much cleaner, much nicer, and it makes it more tolerable to listen to, which will keep people coming back. Uh, again, like I said, I googled the settings and it's been fantastic. It cuts out my refrigerator turning on, my furnace, none of that picks up. Uh, other than that, I have a Heil PR40 mic. It's an excellent microphone. <coughs> it costs a little bit of money. Uh, it looks a little more snazzy because it's got the muff and the um, vibration list thing on it. You can get it without that. Um, Again, you don't have to spend the money. I'm going over what I do specifically to get the professional quality audio. Um, I've, you obviously are free to make all your own choices. Um, but I have a really good microphone, a laptop with Adobe editing software. Uh, uh, my website hosted on fatcow.com and then Libsyn Media Hosting separate of my website because it makes it a little more secure. <clears throat> uh, the process that I go through every week, I plan it out. Uh, this never leaves my side, just like my digital camera on my belt never leaves my belt. Um, I put everything in this. I have plans for chicken tractors. I plan out my audio. I don't do everything on the computer because the computer fail, and, or I could be sitting in a restaurant. I don't go to restaurants anymore because I don't have any money. Uh, I could be sitting outside in a hammock uh, planning out this week's podcast episode, <clears throat> and that's really uh, helpful and beneficial to me. Deciding on the voice of your show, having something that's consistent. I spent a lot of time with format, saying I'm going to have an introduction, I'm going to talk for 10 to 15 minutes about my farm and what I'm doing, and then I'm going to have a 30 to 40 minute interview and then a three to five minute out. And I created those chunks and it was easy for me to say, oh, I need an interview, insert into slot C. Oh, I need my talk, I need to enter in the slot B. And I just create those every week and it's, it, creates a structure and a system that I can get things done. It's not, what am I going to talk about? How am I going to say it this week? Um, and how am I going to format it? I have to fit it into that format. It makes things a little more streamlined, easier. The point of that having that structure and putting everything together, uh, I created this um, from my sister-in-law's magazine, is that I'm taking all those clips and putting it all together to create a podcast. Uh, I have my introduction, my music, my um, interviews, my recording and it all becomes one show, one file. Uh, you can record it beginning to end where you're just talking and not have any music, any stuff. You could just have a half an hour of you know country hour um, talk <coughs> and that's that. It all depends on what you decide is going to be the best for your own podcast. Um, I schedule the interviews and record them. I edit all the clips to get the beginning and the end when we're like, okay, I'm going to start now. Uh, get that out of there. Uh, I sometimes edit some of the ums and ahs out of it to make it a little bit more clean, and that's really simple to do. Um, so you're editing the material? Yeah, and I'll, sh I'll show you when we get to the end of the... Can you use GarageBand Yep, absolutely. Uh, Audacity. Audacity. <clears throat> I happen to have uh, an Adobe a suite um, from a couple years ago that I'm hoping that this machine just hangs in there so I can keep using it. Um, I mix it all down from many different pieces into just the podcast. Uh, I tag the MP3, which I'll show you what that is really fast. Uh, all this is online. Uh, I just don't want to run out of time and upload it to my media host and put it on my website. Um, <clears throat> this is meant to be general overview if you don't get everything. I spent a lot of time getting this far. Um, I create a blog post with WordPress. I add in the Libsyn link. 
Uh, it'll give you a link, and you put it onto the PowerPress plugin if you're familiar with WordPress. Uh, and you know, I let the syndication do the rest. <clears throat> and what that means is I have it up on my, my host, the audio file. I put it up on WordPress. And through this PowerPress plugin, it's just if you have um, WordPress as your site, plugins just plug in and make good things happen. Uh, that's the best way I can explain it. <clears throat> this PowerPress plugin, once you set up all the settings in Pat Flynn and Smart Passive Income, does that on your links. He, so he shows you what all the settings are. He, I just pause the video, did mine. Pause the video, did mine. Pause the video. Really simple. Um, <clears throat> that plugin, when I post my blog post with the audio file on it, has a player where you can play it on my website. Uh, and it automatically sends it out to iTunes, Stitcher, and Blackberry. Uh, and those are three other areas where people can download it and see it and review you on iTunes, iTunes and you get ranked. And those are other powerful search engines. Uh, I've had people, I didn't know that Stitcher existed before I set up the plugin. I don't, I don't, I don't use Stitcher now. But I've had so many guests say, oh, I just found your uh, podcast under recommended um, podcasts on Stitcher. And I've been listening to the last 20 episodes. Could you please stop saying the name of your website so many times? Uh, <laughs> Because when you listen to them back to back to back, it's at the beginning and the end. So you get it repeatedly. I'm like, well, you knew where to go. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> uh, and then promote it. Uh, if you build it, they will not come. Uh, there's so much information on the internet that no one really gives a darn. Uh, so you have to promote what you're doing outside of podcasting. You can't just put it up and expect people to listen. And one of the ways that I do that I don't specifically target farmers with a big um, following or a following. I target farmers that are doing something interesting. And if you're doing something interesting and I can find you online, chances are other people know about you as well. And when I have them as guests on my show, they put it up on their website. Part of Farm Marketing Solutions is everybody can have access to it for free whenever they want. And if people want to put it somewhere else, it's not like a photograph where you can just chop off my name. It's my voice for 45 minutes. Uh, you keep, there's no getting around it. <clears throat> it's not just a picture of a cow. So anybody who wants to put it anywhere, and the idea is that with that allowing that free information, make it useful, make it beneficial to people, uh, make them actually want to listen to it. Um, if they like what they hear, they'll be more likely to come back to my website where I have a sales funnel uh, for selling products. Or um, right now I'm just generating traffic, so I don't have a lot of products up. Uh, a lot of the information I put online is for free anyways. Uh, and I make my money through affiliate links, which is earning a commission. And that's a whole other uh, discussion. But the point is that you have to promote it. I, for everything on Farm Marketing Solutions, I keep it all organized into folders. The podcast has its own folder with the intro and the outro. I have the episodes broken down. I have 15 episodes so far. Every episode gets its own folder. Um, keep everything organized. Otherwise, you're going to hate yourself. <clears throat> You go into each episode. And part of tagging, so this is the what finally goes online. Um, otherwise, it would look like this. It's the generic windows with a note, and it says wave. To tag your photo puts the name of the podcast or your file, the photograph on it. <clears throat> and that's through the ID3 tag editor. Uh, and that's all covered on Podcast Answer Man. And Smart Passive Income, and I have links for it on my website as well. <clears throat> um, as far as editing, I just open it up with Adobe Sound Booth, which uh, you can use GarageBand or any, of, any number of free editing software. As long as it edits audio, you're just clipping a few things in. <clears throat> um, I bring all the separate files in and create a multi-track, which is just two rows where I overlap things. Uh, it's just like building that podcast sticker that I created. <clears throat> um, and it creates a waveform. It looks really fun. And you cut out ums and ahs and um, save your file. Um, so this is what a waveform looks like. It breaks down. I, I can bet you that that's an um right there. <laughs> Uh, at this point, I know exactly what they look like. And at a glance, I can tell you how many they are and where they are. <clears throat> and it's really simple to get rid of them. You just highlight it and click Delete, and your um is gone. 
uh, just do it in a way that it doesn't sound like you're skipping sentences or you really cut something out. So yeah, this was uh, a general overview. Uh, if you have any more questions, I'd be, I'd be happy now. Well, I'm part of a sustainability education center up in Jefferson County, and we're actually applying to have a radio station kind of set up with our organization. Uh -huh. How easy is it? Is, is it just recording via that broadcast and then taking it out into a podcast? Yeah. If you have a, a radio station already, you can record it, and then it's just getting that audio file, the MP3 file. Uh, I do everything in a wave, so it's like having a raw photo, <clears throat> and then um, compress it down into an MP3 and put that online. You can do that with anything, uh, as long as it's you own the content. You know, if you have rights to the content, you can put it online. What's that? Yeah, I mean, I could, I, you could start a, a podcast with your cell phone or one of these and create the audio file and not edit it, not edit it and put it online and there's your podcast. I mean, it's that, it really it can be that simple. Uh, I just wanted to highlight the difference between very simple and the efforts that I've gone to to make sure that uh, in the first three months I have 1,100 downloads every week. Uh, and that's, that's pretty good with the website starting from scratch, the podcast starting from scratch and people not knowing about it. So what is it now since you've been at it for a while between, from interview, what was your post-production time? Uh, <clears throat> I, I say that my average of scheduling an interview, getting the interview, um, <clears throat> editing it, writing a blog post for it, because I don't just put the audio online, I write a blog post and I get all the links that are mentioned on it so you don't have to take notes while you listen. You can listen to it in the field and know that if you come back and look for episode 14, everything that was mentioned is there, uh, is five to six hours per week. <clears throat> in the same mode. I don't I already work plenty of jobs. Yeah. It would be nice to um, take your knowledge and try to get a few dollars for it. Are, do you when you do the podcast, like I, I am actually I, I've been listening more I'm old, but I'm listening more to podcasts and I actually don't like them because there's no pictures. Like mm -hmm. I actually like the raw like if you're interviewing I know there's yep. like I can see you even though there's audio. I just find is is that a is that just a different way of doing something or and then do you no, it's do not. your podcast do you just say hey if you like what you hear uh, give me money me just no I, I know you you can and people have done that sent me to sites and said you should watch this this girl's making a killing it's it's so subjective and there's so many different ways. And that gets into um, what your goals are and how you're making money. It's with it. It takes a lot of effort um, to build that uh, to a point where you can monetize it. It's good if you have. <clears throat> so with a farmer, a lot of your product is sold locally. You know, my chickens. It's in a, t a 10 mile radius for the most part. My CSA members, they mapped it out. <clears throat> the podcast isn't for them. It's for people listening across the country. I had somebody write in from Australia last week. That listens, and I like I highlight tools uh, on my website and get people interested in the business of farming, where I can highlight things. Maybe this I would earn a commission from selling, uh, from recommending stuff to B and H, or you know if I got enough people interested, or if you were talking about had a podcast on raising cats, and you had your own line of cat stuff that you could ship out anywhere in the country, having that podcast on helpful ways to feed your cat organic healthy food or have organic catnip scratchers uh, and you were talking to vets from across the country on the cat issues that people would be interested in. I, this is, I'm just making this up as I go. <clears throat> You're using that to bring the people in and get them interested and get them back to the website where you have the visuals, you have the sales funnel where you can sell your products then. If you're a farmer who can sell frozen meat across the country and you're talking about you have a podcast on pastured poultry or pastured animals. Um, you can then use that as an avenue, um, but it you know it depends on what your marketing goals and your business goals are. We're at time. We're at time. Wow. So, thank you. Yeah. Sorry to like sock you with a lot of info. Yeah.